Thank you so much, Kelsey. What a great time of worship. Can I invite you just to join me for just a moment of prayer? And before we do that, we want to include in this prayer time our prayers for Brett and Peggy Kiefer, their son Grant, um, passed away uh, this past Saturday night. That would have been the 22nd of January in a car accident. And um, we will be laying Grant to rest and celebrating his life uh, this next weekend. That would be uh, Friday night, the 28th, 6 to 9 p.m. here at the church uh, sanctuary. That would be the visitation. And then uh, Saturday the 29th at 11 a.m. Uh, would be his memorial service. So if you could be a part of that to celebrate and help um, comfort and be of encouragement to Brett and Peggy and to their daughter Grace, and her husband Ryan, they are a part of our church, and Brett's mom Vicki Denning, also a part of this church. Um, we just want to come and surround them with our arms and our prayers and our love. And so when we pray here, just a moment, I want to include them in our prayers. Lord, tonight, we just pray for our, our nation. We pray a blessing on the United States of America. Help us, Lord, as a nation, uh, fulfill our destiny and purpose. Help us, Lord, uh, have you at the very center of all we do. We also pray today for uh, our, um, our president, for all those that serve in any place of leadership or authority. We, we ask God that uh, you direct their steps, guide them, Give them a heart that longs for you. Surround them with godly counsel. Help them make decisions that honor you and, and um, advance your kingdom. Uh, Lord, we also pray today for our troops and our first responders. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We bless the seed of Israel today, thanking you that as we bless Israel, we'll be blessed in Jesus' name. And Lord, we also lift up the Kiefer family today. We, we ask, Lord, that you would surround them with your mercy and your grace and your comfort. For, Lord, we know... Uh, you understand the loss of a child. Lord, you sacrificed your own son for our salvation. And Lord, in, in doing so, you laid your life down with the loss. Um, you sense that and know that. And so we, we pray that you comfort the key for family in a way that only you can. We pray as we honor Grant's life, Lord, may you be exalted in all that's done. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. And again, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Can I welcome you? I tell you, we're so glad you're here. We do have a few announcements here in just a moment. Before we do that, I want to receive our offering tonight. Let me just remind you, we've been talking about the importance of tithing and that being um, a first part in our life of something the Lord wants to do. Um, but really, because the truth is, uh, whatever is first, God blesses. So if we want God to bless our finances, he has to be first in our finances. This is the principle of tithing. We give him the first and he blesses the rest. I've heard so many testimonies time after time after time after time of people that say, I put God first in this area and I watched God supernaturally bring blessing to the other 90%. I can tell you myself, this works. Absolutely, 100%. I've seen God make a way where there was no way. I believe this principle is absolutely 100% the truth. That God moves in ways that we cannot, we cannot even begin to sense and know, all because of honoring him with the first. This is the promise that's attached to tithing. This is Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. Honor the Lord by giving him the first part of your income. And he will fill your barns and with wheat and barley and overflow your wine vats with the finest wine. Think about that. When God gets the first, he will fill. What a, what a great exchange. Think about that for a second. He gets a percentage, we get full. He gets a percentage, we get an overflow. He gets a small portion, we get an enormous portion. That's what God says. I love that promise. And you can't get a better exchange than that. That God promises when he's first and we honor him with the first part, the blessing of overflow comes into our life. This is the kind of blessing I want. Then there's the purpose. Why in the world would God ask us to do this when clearly God owns the cattle on a thousand hills, when God owns all the resources of heaven and earth, when God lacks for nothing, why in the world would God want us to bring to him some sense of substance? Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 23, tells us the purpose of tithing. It says that God needs to be first in every year of our life. That's the purpose. By doing so, what we are giving to God is not necessarily our money, but we're giving him the very thing that that money represents, our heart. The purpose of tithing is to teach us that always 
God comes first in our lives. That's Proverbs 14, 23. So where should we tithe? Why should we do that? The purpose is very simple, that it is a demonstration of our hearts being in God's hands and Him uh, receiving the very place where our treasure is. How about the place? Malachi 3.10 says, bring that into the storehouse. Test me in this and see that I am not the Lord all-powerful, that I will open the windows of heaven and pour out so much that you can't even begin to contain it. The storehouse is the place where we come and worship the Lord together. We become an apostolic gathering of churches in that gathering. We are to bring our offering to the Lord in that place. It's why we take the offering on Sunday because it's a, it's a first as we come together. It's the place of worship that we bring to the Lord our gifts. And how about the day? I love that it's the first day of the week. And I love the opportunity that we have each day to give. I'll never forget years ago, Miss Hermine Johnston, who was a, an elder in this church really for years and years and years, pastoral, uh, great, just godly woman, great preacher, great leader, before she passed away, I said to her, I said, Miss Hermine, um, is there any principle that you would tell me that has changed your life? She goes, bring an offering every time you come to church. I said, really? She goes, oh, I never come to church without bringing the Lord something. I said, well, why? She goes, because it's an exchange. I believe as I release something that God releases something. And I'll tell you what, here was a, a precious lady that was um, single all of her life, cared for her family, left an incredible inheritance, and was always generous towards God in every good work. Why in the world is that? Because I believe she practiced the principle when God is first, on the first, that there's something supernatural that he does. And if I could leave you with one principle, it is that principle of first. Everything that God gets the first of, everything else in that vein is blessed. So once again, what's the promise? Honor the Lord with the first, and he makes it full. He gets a percentage, we get a full portion. What's the purpose? It's, it's because we're always putting God in the very first place in our lives. Place the, the place that we worship, the storehouse, and then also the, the day. It's the first day of the week. What a tremendous opportunity to give. So right now, here's the way that you can be involved online. You can give through our PayPal portal at uh, thriveapopka.com. And then at the top, it says give online, and that will link you to our PayPal link. Or you can text to give right now, 833-391-0349. Again, 833-391-0349. I'm going to pray a blessing over your offering right now and give the opportunity to be involved in what God's doing uh, around the around the world. And I know some people say this is the point to tell people what you're doing around the world, why they should give. And I believe in that sometimes. But listen, you, we should just do it because it's the right thing to do. Whether we, see, whether we see anything being done or not, we should do it because it's what the Lord says. We bring it to Him and watch Him work. It's a blessing for you and it's a blessing for me. Lord, today, thank you for the privilege that we have to give tonight. Lord, we bring you our tithe and our offering. We thank you that Lord, as we uh, obey the principle of tithing, that we believe you're going to give an exchange to us of a small percentage for a full portion. I believe, Lord, in Jesus' name, that the purpose is that we're going to show you that our heart is towards you. We're going to give you first and watch you multiply. So I speak that blessing. Open windows. Pour out so much they can't contain it. Full barns full spiritual life, full physical life in Jesus' mighty name as you give. In the precious and mighty name of Jesus and God's people said, Amen. Thrive Church and welcome to Wednesday night service. We are so happy that you were able to stream with us tonight. Make sure to say hello in the chat to everyone as we go about service and let's get into a few quick announcements. First, this Sunday is our annual business meeting. So if you are a member here at Thrive Church, please make plans to join us at 1215 in the sanctuary this Sunday. We will have lunch for you. So we would love to see you there. If you are not able to make it in building, we will be sending out a Zoom link. So if you've not already received an email about the business meeting, please email us at jessica at aaog.tv. 
We want to make sure that we give you that Zoom link if you're not able to make it in building. Next, our first Wednesday will be next week on February 2nd, so make sure to mark your calendar. Join us in building next Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. We'll all get together, have some dinner, and Pastor Kevin has a great word for us, so make sure to join us. Our teenagers and kids will also be in building, so bring the whole family. It'll be a great night. And finally, after Christine Bells is done teaching tonight, make sure to tune in at 8 o'clock p.m. on Pastor Kevin's Facebook page or our church YouTube page for communion. He takes communion live every night at 8 o'clock p.m. So make sure to tune in tonight after Christine Bellis and take communion with us. That's it for this week's announcements. Have a wonderful week, you guys. See you on Sunday. Hey Thrive Church, it is Christine Vallis and I'm blessed as always to join you guys again here as we flip over God's calendar. So coming up is the chalkboard teaching for the new biblical month we're entering into. It is the month of Adar. And Adar is the last month in God's spiritual calendar, but we will discover here in this year 5782, it is not only a Sabbath year of rest, but it is also a biblical leap year. Yes, that is right. So, you know, on our calendar, on the Gregorian calendar, when it's a leap year, we add an extra day to the month of February. But on God's calendar during a leap year, we add a whole extra month of Adar. That's right. So we go through the month of Adar twice. So it's pretty amazing. And, you know, somehow it all evens out in the end. Now, during the month of Adar, there is an appointed time called the Feast of Purim. And during a biblical leap year, Purim is going to be celebrated during the second month of Adar. So to help you navigate through this Sabbath leap year and just connecting with God's prophetic calendar in general, I want to remind you that we do have resources on my website. We have his appointed times, a calendar, journal, and study guide to help you connect with uh, the Lord's prophetic calendar in real time in your life. And also, if you're interested, we also have a wall calendar that features the chalkboards every month. And as you see, even during this leap year, we go through the month of Adar twice. So all these resources and others are available on my website for you to check out. So I have really been enjoying this sabbatical year of rest. I pray you have been too, and I trust that you have been receiving fresh revelation from these chalkboard teachings and videos that we've been reposting. And as always, we have been updating the dates along the bottom of the videos so that they correspond to 2022 and 5782 for your reference. So as I rewatched the teaching of Adar, I was reminded that the word Adar means strength. And in the Bible, strength is associated with joy. In Nehemiah, it says the joy of the Lord is my strength. So every time Adar rolls around, I always feel like the Lord is calling me and calling us to end the year strong in his joy. And even now here during this leap year to end the year strong, leaping for joy, right? But you know, we can only really leap for joy when we know that we are loved by God and that we can trust him. When we really know that God is for us and not against us. And so that is why it's so important to get a fresh revelation of God's love for us so that we can go forth, so that we can leap forth. And so I sense the Lord calling us to leap forth into his presence because in his presence is fullness of joy. So as his children, when we know that we are loved by God, we will leap forth into his presence and come boldly to his throne of grace. And it's from that place that we can go out, that we can leap out and finish the year strong in his joy. So I'm excited, guys. I pray you are too. Enjoy the teaching and thanks as always for having me. Welcome to the chalkboard teaching for the new biblical month that we're entering into. It is the month of Adar. And Adar is the last month in God's spiritual calendar. And the word Adar means strength. 
And in the Bible, strength is associated with joy. So I believe the Lord is calling us to end the year strong, but not in our own striving. He's calling us to end the year strong in His joy. My name is Christine Vallis, and I am blessed to uncover the Lord's prophetic calendar with you in real time. So thank you so much for tuning in, and I pray that you are blessed by this teaching. So, you know, many of us pray for strength, but what we really need is joy. <laughs> and so what is joy? I want to spend just a couple minutes laying a foundation of what joy is the biblical too definition of it. But first let's look in Webster's Dictionary and it says that joy is an emotion evoked by well-being, success, or the prospect of possessing what one desires. Basically the feeling you get when everything is going your way. And the problem is, is that everything doesn't always go our way, right? So um, basically people are out there just trying to be happy or just fake it till you make it, right? But that doesn't work either because that only lasts as long as we last or as long as our circumstances are good, right? So guys, true joy <laughs> is not based on our circumstances because they go up and down. Real joy is based on our relationship with God through Jesus and we cannot experience true joy without this relationship and you know so when we receive Jesus we receive forgiveness we have peace with God so that is true joy right and if you read through the Psalms you'll see all over the place it talks about how the king rejoices in thy salvation or restore unto me the joy of my salvation so salvation with God brings joy. That relationship is true joy. And it, you know, also it says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. So if you break that verse down, God loves us. <laughs> we are the beloved of God. And he's offering us eternal life, which isn't just heaven. Eternal life means knowing God here and now. We can know him. So guys, if you've never received Jesus, today is the day of salvation. And I encourage you to do so. Because when you receive him, of course, you receive this eternal life with God, forgiveness of sins, but also we become a new creation. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit, and that includes all of the fruit of the Spirit as listed in Galatians 5. And so you want to check that out. It's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So joy is not just limited to an emotion. No, biblical joy, true joy, is a fruit of the Spirit. And we have it to the full in our inner man, right? We're not going to get any more joy in our spirit than what we have now. We have it to the full. We have all the love, all the joy, all the peace in our spirit, man. And it is part of our identity in Christ. It's part of our benefits as a believer. But the question is, how do we get his joy that's within us out of us, right? So I'm just going to go through a few quick um, ways to get his joy um, to manifest in our lives. And the first thing is to get in his presence. Psalm 16 says, in your presence is fullness of joy. And that word presence in Hebrew means faces. So, you know, joy manifests when you are face to face with someone, even in real life. Um, meeting with someone over coffee is much better than a phone call or a Zoom call. And I think many of us are really appreciating face to face meetings now more than ever. So God meets with us face to face, guys. And Isaiah 56, 7 says, he makes us joyful in his house of prayer. And prayer is conversation with God, you know? So when we're with God in his presence, his fullness of joy, and in conversation with him, we should be joyful coming out of it, right? And so in his presence, guys, he speaks to us. So in his word, 
Joy will manifest as we get in there and as his word gets into us. Jeremiah 15, 16 says, your words um, were unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. You've experienced this if you are a believer and you're getting to God's word and you get a word from God and um, it, it ignites you. It's like a rhema word that speaks life, right? His words are spirit and life. It, it propels you because we are loved. We discover God is for us. We find his wisdom. And so as we get in his word, guys, they will manifest joy in our lives. So we want to get in his word. We want to hide it in our hearts so that the enemy cannot steal it from us. And I encourage you guys to read through the book of Philippians all about joy, right? And even the book of Esther this month. And so here's another really um, creative way to have joy manifest in our lives. How about rejoicing, right? Well, praising God is rejoicing, giving him thanks. And what happens? We focus our attention on God's goodness instead of our circumstances. And you know, the more we acknowledge him, the more we're in his word, um, Actually, it, def it changes the default setting of our heart. It's like changing the home page of our heart from despair to joy. And basically, that's what Romans 12 is. We are being transformed by the renewing of our mind. So we won't automatically go to the normal default of, of being dis uh, depressed or discouraged. As, as his word transforms us, we're, our default shifts to joy. So joy, guys, is much stronger than we think. His joy, you know, and in God's word, it says that his word is a cure. And his word also says that rejoicing is a cure. So everyone has been talking about this vaccine, right, for COVID-19, but meanwhile, rejoicing is like a vaccine. Proverbs 17, 22 says, a joyful heart does good like a medicine. So if rejoicing is a cure, why are we not rejoicing, right? It's free and there's no negative side effects. So, you know, when you do get a vaccine, bad things aren't supposed to penetrate you, right? So if we are rejoicing, guys, bad things that the enemy tries to shoot at us, they won't penetrate us. Things will just roll off us when we're rejoicing. And the enemy hates that because he wants us sick. He wants us miserable. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And he is the ultimate killjoy, right? So guess what, guys? When we are rejoicing, we are basically agreeing to what what God says about us, we are saying, amen, thank you, Lord, to what you saying is true. I believe it. And that is submitting to him. And when we do, and when we continue in that, we praise him, we resist the devil. And guess what? He flees. So rejoicing is in the Lord, guys, is one of our greatest weapons against the enemy. And I think that's why Paul said, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. So our joy not only blesses us and blesses God, but our joy is a witness to the world. Jesus calls us to be the light of the world and our joy is our light. Check it out. Proverbs 13, 9 says the light of the righteous rejoices. So they will know us by our love and they will know us by our joy. And you know, that goes back to Nehemiah 8.10 that says the joy of the Lord is my strength. But if you look at the whole context, the Jews were coming out of captivity. This was the first time they actually heard some of them uh, for the first time hearing the word of God spoken to them, declared to them. And so they received the word. They were worshiping. They were repenting. They had tears of sorrow. But it was then at that moment that Nehemiah and Ezra rose up and said, Do not sorrow for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And they went on to say, be still, do not be grieved. And the people went their way and they rejoiced greatly because they understood the words that were declared to them. So guys, there is a time for tears. There is a time for repentance, but not 
penance, not unworthiness. And the Lord doesn't want us to live in sorrow. He delights when we offer him the sacrifice of praise. Praise is becoming to the believer. So wow, guys, there is so much power in our in his joy, right? And so it makes sense to me that the Lord would highlight um, the power of his joy as we end the spiritual year. So let's be encouraged to tap in to his joy within us because it is our supernatural strength. Okay, okay, guys. Well, thank you for letting me lay that foundation of joy. And now we can hit the chalkboard. And first, let's look at the Hebrew letter connected to this month, which is Kuf. It's over here, and it really points to where we are. It's a picture of the back of the head, a cycle of time, a circuit. What is behind or what is final? So again, this is the last month of the spiritual year. It's also the last month of winter. And you know, that's reason for rejoicing right there, right? So let's keep moving forward. Let's not look back. No matter who's in office here in the United States, COVID or not, mask or not, we are pressing on rejoicing in the joy of our salvation. Because guys, if we keep looking back, we will never go forward, right? That's pretty obvious. Philippians 3.13 says this one thing Thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. We want to keep our eyes on the prize. Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, guys, and it's his joy that propels us onward and upward in Christ. So as we move through this month, let's pay attention as certain things, things may be ending in our lives and actually celebrate certain endings in our life. And you know, I don't think we do this enough, but the word actually encourages us in Ecclesiastes 7, 8, it says that the end of a matter is better than its beginning and patience is better than pride. So in other words, finishing is better than starting. And I think um, a lot of us can relate to that. It's so easy to start something, but not very easy to finish it, right? So we need joy to finish things. His joy, it'll be our strength. So let us not end the year in haste. Let us not rush things. Let us not move in our flesh, but let us finish in his joy and in, in his patience. And we have that to the full within us. It is our true nature in Christ. Now the heavens declare the glory of the Lord and the constellations all point to Messiah. And this month, the constellations the constellation is Pisces right here, and it's a picture of the two fish. And um, it depicts the multitude of believers that were promised to Abraham, and also a depiction of Jew and Gentile coming together as one new man and Yeshua. So I believe that these fish also encourage us to dive down into the depths of his word, to get into that secret place, to find our supply and hidden identity in that hidden world. Colossians 3, 3 says we are hidden in Christ. We are this new creation in Christ. And the word also says, as he is, so we are in this world now. <laughs> in heaven, yes, but also now. So as we dive deep, we will discover our true identity in him. And Isaiah 12, 3 talks about how with joy, we will draw waters from the wells of our salvation. I believe that also talks about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So if you've never received that, the Lord will not withhold any good thing from you. So you can just ask to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and you will be um, baptized in power and praying in the Spirit. And also as we dive down, we will discover that hidden wisdom that God has for us strategies and the treasures that his word offers us and also guys we will discover that we are his treasure we are that pearl of great price and you know many of us may find ourselves hidden 
physically, especially during this whole COVID thing going on, you know? And so I have learned that the hidden place is not to be despised because it's truly a time of preparation. And so even our daily time where we, we, we pull aside and we go into our secret place with the Lord, it is preparing us for the day ahead. So we go in the, in the secret place and the hidden place so that we launch out. So um, whether it's our daily quiet time or even that longer season of consecration or concealment, we are not to despise it because he is readying us to come out and to be prepared. And God loves us so much that he is preparing us so that we go out when he sends us forth. He will launch us out in his confidence, in his love, and in his wisdom. Now, also, guys, as we move forward in this month, the Lord doesn't want the giants to produce fear in us over here in the corner of the chalkboard. You know, first, I'm sorry, second Timothy um, 1 7 says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That is the fruit of the spirit, right? So guys, fear is a liar. That's right. Fear comes from the father of lies himself. So when fear rears its ugly head in our lives, what do we do? Well, Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me. And so believing in God is knowing who he really is and discovering his true nature that he is for us and he loves us unconditionally. So his perfect love will cast out fear fear, the more we get that fresh revelation. And then we will rise up like David. We will face Goliath. And you know, David was in the New Testament and he knew his God. You know, how much more for us, we're under the new covenant. We have much better promises so that we can stand in the face of any giant from a position of victory. We are more than conquerors in Christ, guys. That is our true identity. So when we get a fresh revelation of his great love for us and that his perfect love casts out fear, guess what? It also causes our fears to laugh. <laughs> Isn't that great? I'm laughing just saying that. And in Proverbs 31, 25, it says that the man or woman of God is clothed in dignity and strength, and she can laugh or he can laugh and smile at the future. So how is that possible? It's not just by laughing things off in life. No, but it's taking God at his word. Yeah, it's putting everything in the context of being the, the beloved of God. Yeah, that, you know, you are realizing that you have a hope and a future in him, that all of the blessings of God are yes and amen, and that the curse has been reversed over your life. You now have peace with God, you know, and so... Now, when a giant comes our way or when lies come our way, we're like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Don't you know that I'm God's favorite? That should be our attitude. And so joy arises in our heart. Confidence arises. Our authority in, in, in who we are in Christ arises. And we begin to laugh in the enemy's face. And we begin to laugh at the future because we know that God loves us so much. So if you haven't guessed it, laughter is the action um, connected with this month. As we mentioned earlier, Proverbs uh, 17, 22, laughter is good medicine. Even science proves that, right? And so religion paints this false picture of God being boring, okay? And some churches may be, some Christians may be, right? <laughs> but God is not. How do we know that? Well, Hebrews 1, 9 says that Jesus had more joy than all of his companions. And Jesus is a perfect representation of God himself. So guys, the Lord is joyful and we are made in his image to be joyful, to have a merry heart. And that is awesome. That gives us liberty and freedom to laugh. And that's just fun. I can laugh right now again. So not is he only encouraging us to laugh, but he's encouraging us to leap for joy like Naphtali. That is the tribe connected 
to this month. And Jacob's blessing over enough, Tali, was this. He will be a doe let loose and he will bring forth beautiful words. So Naphtali was blessed with a gift of communication through movement and through words. So if you look through the Bible, you'll see Naphtali was known they, uh, to be um, known for their speed and agility. They were swift on their feet like hind's feet, right? They were quick to run their troops into battle. Psalm 18 depicts this um, beautifully. For by you, Lord, I can run over a troop. By my God, I can leap over a wall. It's my God who girds me with strength, which is joy. He makes my way blameless. He makes my feet like hind's feet. And he sets me on high places. That is our true position in him, guys. And Naphtali was more than just a tribe, but they were a dancing troop. They were a doe let loose, right? A prisoner set free that they were free to dance and worship. So in this month, you may consider exploring new ways of expressing your love and worship to God, even in dance. I'm telling you guys, our praise confounds the enemy. All right, now Naphtali also encourages us to be swift to speak forth beautiful words. And I had to bring this up as God just gave me such great revelation on this part of, um, of, of the month and how he wants to encourage us because it's interesting to note that last year in 2020, we entered the biblical year, the biblical decade 5780. And that is a decade of declaration connected with the Hebrew letter pay, which is connected to our mouth. So we've been learning how life and death are in the power of our tongue. Um, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Whatever we put in is going to come out. And so last year, check this out. It's interesting to note that last year, as we began the decade of declaration, in this month of Adar last year, the month connected with the mouth, connected with communication, that the virus hit. And what happened? Masks were introduced, right? And if you ask me, masks steal joy, <laughs> right? Um, anyway, Zoom calls zoomed, social media soared, and online platforms exploded, right? And they continue to do so. And now here, a year later, here we are in Adar 5781, and what is happening now in this month of that's connected to our words and communication? Our words are being censored. <laughs> so what do we do, right? What then shall we say? Well, 5781, that prophetic year, um, shows us, God is speaking to us, that we are to be led by his word and we are to lead others by his word. And I just couldn't um, help but think about um, the book of Acts and Peter and John. Check it out. This was after they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They healed a lame man, right? And by the way, he went forth leaping and rejoicing, okay? And thousands of people believed they received the Holy Spirit. And then what happened? The high priest put them in jail. And they asked them, what power is this that you do this? By what name do you do this in? And they saw that they were bold, but they were uneducated. And they realized that they had been with Jesus. And they had to release them because they couldn't deny that the man was healed. And the crowds were just full of joy. But this is what they told Peter and John. They commanded them not to speak and not to teach any more in that name of Jesus. And what did Peter and John said, say? They said, we can't but speak about Jesus. And so guys, that should be our response. Their persecution did not stop them, but it ignited them. And they prayed for more boldness. And guess what? They received it. They received great power and great grace to share the gospel and to go forth with signs and wonders. So guys, keep yourself in the word. Keep speaking. Keep teaching. Keep asking for boldness and you will receive it. And you will receive great power and great grace to do so in season and out. I am so encouraged by that and I pray you are too. 
And I also think that Isaiah 52 encapsules what the Lord wants to exhort to us. And it says this, how beautiful are the, on the mountains, are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring forth good tidings of great joy, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. That is awesome encouragement from the Lord. So lastly, guys, um, in this month of Adar, there is an appointed time. It is the Feast of Purim. And so um, I encourage you guys to read through the book of Esther. It's all about um, the Feast of Purim. It's all in there. You can check it out. It is a must read for such a time as this. And as you read through Esther and even um, you know look at the, the Feast of Purim, you will see that all the characteristics really of Adar this month are really embedded in um, the book of Esther and the Feast of Purim. So just briefly, you know, Esther was um, hidden in a secret place for a season and then she was appointed Queen of Persia. And when a dust sentence fell upon the Jews of the land, she again went into that hidden place with the Lord and she received war strategies and then she was obedient and she let forth in faith right she approached the king and she spoke forth beautiful words and she revealed her true identity and god used her guys to deliver his people and the curse was reversed right his decree was final the jews were not destroyed but they defended themselves right they stood up against the giants and they were victorious and they survived and they thrived even to this day. So guys, Purim actually commemorates this um, amazing defeat of the enemy. Death is swallowed up in the victory of God, ultimately through Christ, and that is reason to celebrate. So this year in 2021, Purim begins Thursday night, February 25th, through Friday night, February 26th. So in closing, guys, the enemy, we can expect him. He wants us to end the year in defeat, but we're smarter than that, right? The truth is that our future is bright because the joy of the Lord is our strength. So Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you that you are for us, Lord, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, that every weapon that comes against us, every word we shall condemn. So Lord, thank you that your decree over our lives is final and you do have a hope and a future for us. And God, thank you that you rejoice over us with singing and then that we are the joy that was set before you. So guys, let us wake up to that true reality and let's end the year strong in his joy. Let us keep our eyes on Jesus, rejoicing in his love, and we will run in his joy as we cross over the finish line this um, spiritual year, and we will go out with joy and be led forth with peace, even Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Prince of Peace himself. Thank you guys for listening, and blessings and go forth in his joy and in his love.